The journey of everyone mentioned in the Bible, whether we start from Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, all the way till the New Testament, everyone is very unique. And that is because they all had their peculiar journey with God, their peculiar call with God, and their peculiar walk with God. And today I'm led to share my lessons from the story of Elijah. I find Elijah's, you know, adventures, if I'll call them that, faith adventures in the Bible quite interesting and lessons that we can even learn as children of God in such a time as this that hit us in the world. And so in a couple of maybe days or weeks, depending on how we can finish it, I'll just share from 1 Kings chapter 17, which is where Elijah first appeared and the journey until how he was taken up in a chariot of God and what we can learn and apply. Because every time that you read the Bible, there must be practical application into our daily lives. It's not just a, an historical book, a spiritual book, it's all of those things, but it's indeed the manual for victorious Christian living while it is also how we continually come to know God and in seeing how we interact with different children of his it's an interesting way to see also the ways and the thoughts of God amen amen so you're welcome once again to this channel my name is Uluwa Fumidara and on this channel we talk about life through the word and also have sessions on worship and like I said we're looking at first Kings chapter 17 I'll spend about 30 minutes minutes in this video so wherever we end on that 30 minute journey we will continue in the next video but it says here Elijah proclaims a drought now the story the book of first Kings you know tells us about different king king from king in the Bible from when the children of God had said they wanted kings and then the king started with Saul, Saul, with Saul sorry and from Saul to David and from David to Solomon and from Solomon to Rehoboam and then the king started changing the kingdom broke into two and all of that dynamic, right, of how the different kings ruled, whether they did good or they did bad. And I know that I've done a video on this channel talking about the tale of four kings. But in 1 Kings chapter 17, we are introduced to a prophet called Elijah. And I believe, which is why I've titled this video, Walking in Faith in a Time of Famine or in a Time of Crisis, or in this time where it just seems like the world is in all sorts of straits. There are many lessons to learn because Elijah was, in fact, he was the one that proclaimed what brought a famine. And let us see how that panned out even for he himself. So 1 Kings 17, Elijah proclaims a drought. I'm reading from the New King James translation. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. So at this time, things had been happening. The king Ahab was married to Jezebel. They were serving Baal, worshipping Baal. So Elijah came as the prophet of the Lord in that season and said, you know what, because of your doings, I am proclaiming a drought and there will not be rain for three years. Rain is instrumental to farming, which is instrumental to agriculture, to feeding. Rain is instrumental to the source of water. So when a man says that it will not rain for three years, you are saying that water supply and food supply will be in shortage. This was a very crazy thing to do. And I find that when Elijah made this proclamation, it's easy to expect that because he was the one that made the proclamation, maybe he would be exempt from it, right? So because he's the man of God that came with the word that rain would not fall, it's possible to think that for him, God will make a supernatural supply of maybe it will rain on his own house or he will have a special source of water or agriculture. But let's see how things pan out. It says in verse 2, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherit, which flows into the Jordan. 
and it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there so he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and stayed by the brook chariot which flows into the Jordan the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land and we'll stop there so this is first Kings 17 1 to 7 so what do we see here a man of God appears on the scene he gives a word from the Lord there is not going to be rain now it is interesting that this man of God that gave the decree himself was going to be directly affected by the decree even if he was the mouthpiece of the Lord in that season. And what is the first lesson I want us to take from there? You know, the Bible says that the same sunshine and the same rain falls on all of us, whether you're a child of God or you're not child of God. And many times as children of God and as people of faith, I think we have some presumptions, you know, some erroneous thoughts sometimes that just because you're a child of God, if things are happening a certain way in the land, in the society, you will be exempted from it. So maybe a special sunshine will shine just over your own house or over your own family. You know, if they are laying off people from work, you will not be laid off because you are a person of faith. You know, there are different scenarios and examples. If they were going to get a band of people together and say oh it was this group of people that did this you know maybe you would find favor and i'm not saying those things do not happen they do but there are some situations where if something is happening to everyone even as a child of faith it will happen to you hear me correctly it will affect you and it will happen to you. But even in that, walking in faith and walking with God is that God will show you a different way as to how to overcome that situation, as to how to get out of that challenge, as to how to preserve and protect you in that season. Because if we do not understand this, what has happened to many people in walking with God is because you did not expect that you would be attacked, because you did not expect that the challenge would also meet you, because you, you thought, and maybe just like Elijah, he could have thought, I brought the word, I gave the decree. Even if I give the decree, God, you sent me, you will exempt me from this. And when he saw that he was not exempted from that, he could have gotten into a complaint. He could have gotten into a pity party. He could have gotten into a time of, you know, mourning and even losing his faith because, like I said, he was personally affected by it. Child of God, walking by faith means walking with the instruction of God per time, per season. When that negative situation happens to you, go back to God and say, God, how are we meant to navigate this? What am I meant to do in this situation? I know that this has happened. I know that I lost my job. I know that I was wrongly accused. I know that I was attacked by the enemy. I know that this, you know, health condition has occurred. But even in this, because you are God, I am going to wait on you for the next instruction of what to do. And this is exactly what happened in verse 2. The man of God gave the decree in verse 1. He says there is not going to be rain for three solid years, except at his word. And he didn't go back to God to say, I know that I have the authority to decree and declare rain again, but I'm not going to do it for the nation. I'm just going to do it for my house. No. That he had released the word and the word affected everyone, including him. But in verse 2, we see what happens. I'm sure he had gone back to God to say, now this has happened. I have released the word. How am I now preserved even in these next three years? It is just like the case of Joseph in the Bible and um, the, the king. The Bible says the king dreamt. And Joseph was able to interpret the dream to say there'll be seven years of famine, there'll be seven, there'll be seven years of plenty first, and there'll be seven years of famine. And God gave him the strategy that you are going to, in the time of plenty, save so that you guys have what will cover you in the time of famine. We, we, we sometimes have come to think faith is, okay, there'll be seven years of plenty, but God, in that seven years of famine, I will be in plenty. No. The instruction that God might be giving you, just like Joseph, was that you would 
definitely have the seven years of famine, but in the seven years of plenty that you are having, I'm going to show you how to save. I'm going to show you how to invest. I'm going to show you how to prepare. I'm going to show you how to spend. I'm going to show you how to be frugal. I'm going to show you what to invest in. I'm going to show you sectors to go into. I'm going to show you the business you can do and you must do. That is how it is. Not that to say, God has said there's going to be seven years of plenty. Then you start praying, Father, in that seven years of famine, for some, you pray it away. If God has decreed something, you cannot pray it away. If he has said, it is going to be like this. Our faith is not that we pray things the way that are meant to be. It is that regardless of what is, we stand upon the word knowing that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And we go back to the God who has given us that purpose and we say, God, how shall these things be? How shall I do this? So we see here in verse 2, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Faith is by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Faith is by the continuous instruction of God to us. God, what are you saying? He had given the command, rain had ceased, the drought had started, and God said, now Elijah, this is what you are going to do. This is how I am going to preserve you in this situation. He says, get away from here. So go away from that place. And I think part of what God knew, because if you look into 1 Kings chapter 18, at some point in time, when the farming became so bad, so, so crazy, so terrible, Ahab was looking for Elijah to kill him. Maybe the king thought, if I kill Elijah, then the prophet that gave the decree will die and then rain will fall again. But Ahab had been on the lookout for Elijah. That where is this Elijah? So God already knew that, look, you cannot stay here. Part of your preservation in these three years is also the preservation of your life. Hmm. We have to be very sensitive to the instruction of the Holy Ghost in the seasons of our lives. He said, get away from me here and turn eastward and hide. So God said to him, Elijah, the first thing I need you to do is hide. You need to go into hiding. Your life right now is at stake. He then says, you will hide by a brook. Now the brook was supplying water and the water of this brook flows into the Jordan. And it will be that your source of water supply will be the brook. So like I said, it wasn't that there was going to be a special supply of rain upon Elijah's household, or like I like to say it, there was going to be a, a bucket, and then every day Elijah would decree and declare into that bucket, water be, water appear, and then water would suddenly appear in the bucket. It's not, Christianity is not hocus pocus. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let's not get it mixed up. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Let's not get it mixed up right he says you will go by this source of water it will be your supply of water you will drink from the brook and god then said and i have commanded the ravens to feed you there this blows my mind there are seasons of our lives where sometimes the source is supernatural and the source is unexpected you are telling this man of god that a bird is going to feed him and the interesting thing about this particular bird, the raven, is that the raven was one of the birds that had been listed, that God had told them in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, and he had told them to avoid, not to eat. He had said they were unclean. So if we go to Deuteronomy 14.14, 14, Deuteronomy 14.14, 14, I hope that, I know that some of the scriptures um, we put up, but even if we don't, I hope that when you watch these videos, you are able to have a Bible and just follow us. So it says in Deuteronomy 14, 14, I'll start from Deuteronomy 14, 11. All clean birds you may eat, but these you shall not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the red kite, the falcon, and the kite after their kinds. Every raven after its kind, the ostrich, the short-eared owl, the seagull, the hawk after their kind, da, 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 and it goes and all of that. And God said they would not eat those animals. He said they are unclean. They shall not be eaten. You may eat all the clean birds. Now, they are clean birds. They are unclean birds. Sometimes we are used to a certain way 
we have done things a certain way. We have lived a certain way. And when God wants to take us to another level, he might be asking us to be open to the things that hitherto we have not been open to, to people, to spaces, to sectors maybe and you're saying oh no i've always known what i wanted to do all my life this is what i've wanted to do all my life i cannot go into that sector i don't have the mind for that oh i've always been an english student i can't do anything in technology because there's coding and there's programming and there's accounting i remember sometimes last year in 2023 and i really desire to take a course right and one of those random days, scrolling on social media, Facebook, I saw a course on data management, data analytics. And in my mind, it was really just a theoretical data course. And then at the time as well, I was doing a lot of things involving data and just understanding the world of data and the world has, is going data as well. So I signed up for this eight, eight week course, not a free course, a paid eight week course. And by week two, I started seeing the X, the Y, A plus B. I'm, I'm like, how did I get here? This is me who had run from math, anything, calculation, all the days of my life. As a child, I started seeing regression analysis. I was like, how did I fall into this trap? And by like week four or five, I truly was going to forgo that course and just leave it because every time I was doing the weekly assessment, I would find my body shaking because I was literally breaking new mental pathways in my mind that I had buried for a long time because I've not had to do anything. Maybe the last thing I did anything math or statistic related was in uni, which is what, 2002, 3, 4. This is almost 20 years later. But God, I, by the grace of God, I stayed. And by the time I finished that course after eight weeks, I was joking with someone and I said, every time I did the course, I could literally feel tracks. I, like, I felt like things were running in my brain. Like literally, it was that stretching and I, I felt it could have been my mind but I literally felt the physical <laughs> opening of my brain and I am all the better for it now I finished the course I did well and I was just so grateful so for some of us just like God sending the raven and this is the point I'm trying to make to feed Elijah Elijah could have said but God that's an unclean bird God could have sent a dove what am I trying to say in walking with God by faith there might be some things you are not used to. It is not always how you have known God, how you have been, what you are used to. The same way the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Sometimes he opens us to new things, new people, new relationships. Some relationships will scare you, maybe because you even look down on yourself, or maybe because you've always thought they were better than you, or maybe because you, know, you just feel like, you are not used to this. It's not what you are used to. But God doesn't work with us by what we are used to. He works with us by what he knows is best for us per time, per season. And he told this man of God, the ravens are going to come and feed you. So we continue in the story. Um, and he says here that, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. When you're walking with God, like truly walking with God, like truly exercising faith, it might not make sense to you. It did not make sense that God said hide. He is a man of God. He is a prophet. He had authority to decree and declare that rain would not fall for three years. He is a powerful man of God. He might be thinking to himself, hide? Me? Elijah? Why should I hide? In fact, in hiding, even other prophets or even other people could have thought he was weak. Can you think about that? They could have thought, how can a whole Elijah that gave this prophecy has, has now gone into hiding? But you don't question it. You don't try to prove a point. Faith is not about proving a point. It's not about proving a point of superiority or a point of power or whatever it is. Faith is walking with God. It's as simple as that. Walking with God, however he has said it, whatever he has said, just follow the Lord. He went and he did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and he stayed by the brook, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. And I started thinking, did they cook the meat or they brought him uncooked meat? I don't know. And bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened, verse 7, that after a while, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land 
by the same command of Elijah. So God says, go to a brook, the brook will give you water. At some point in time, because this man of God had commanded there'll be no rain, the brook dries up. So even his command affected him. And Elijah could have then thought, okay, God is sending me to the brook. In these three years, this brook will give me a supernatural supply of water. Somehow the water will not run up. Do you get what I'm saying? Somehow this particular brook will not dry up, but the brook dried up. And what happens to many of us is we hear the first instruction of the Lord. We do it to a point, things change. And you're wondering, did I not hear God? Did I miss God? But God, you sent me to this brook. This brook is not meant to dry up. I am in this job by, instru by the instruction of the Lord. I'm in this marriage by the instruction of the Lord. This is not meant to happen. God, this cannot be you. You start questioning if it was God, if you heard God, if you miss God. You start even complaining, but God, you sent me here. Why have these things happened? But the truth is, the brook dries up. In some situations, the brook dries up. And what do you do after the brook dries up? You go to God for the next command. That is what it means to walk by faith. Yes, you had a dream, your spouse had a dream, you both saw each other in the dream, you both prayed, you heard the command of the Lord, now you are married and you are having issues. What is the next thing to do? Is not to say, oh, maybe I made a mistake, maybe God did not send us, maybe we didn't hear right. What is the next instruction from God? How do you preserve that marriage in year one? It might be different from how you preserve it in year two. It's different from how you thrive in year five. It's different from the adjustments you need to make in year 10. How you started that business and the instruction you started it with. You don't know the future. You don't know the changing government laws. You don't know the changing economic, you know, financial things that are coming. God knows. And when God is saying make a shift, sometimes make a shift can happen because your brook has dried up and he's saying this source is over this form of supply is over this way that you are used to is over the brook has dried up now come back to me to let me tell you how you will continue after the brook dries up how elijah will be fed after the brook dries up and we'll continue that in the second part of this video